Hi, my name is Tim. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the proper diagnostic procedure for troubleshooting an open winding in the indoor fan motor of the heat pump simulator. Now, this is the indoor fan motor right here. Now, to begin with, as in any service call, we need to make sure that the thermostat is calling. And in this case, we're going to call for heat. And we can do this by clicking on the system selector switch, which will turn it to the heat position. After each step, refer to the procedure guide at the top of the page. So once we've done this, we're going to click OK. Now we need to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are operating. And I've removed the cover here, and we can see that the indoor fan motor is not operating. So once we've removed the cover, we click OK, and we're going to click No that the indoor fan motor is not running. Now we proceed to the outdoor unit, and we can see that as evidenced by the red arrows that the compressor is operating, and the outdoor fan motor here at the top is also operating. So again, we're going to remove the cover quickly just to further verify this, and we're going to click OK. Now, again, the outdoor fan and the compressor are running. So after clicking yes on the procedure guide, we need to figure out what's going on with this indoor fan motor. Before we do that, we want to see if the electric heaters are running as well. So you can remove the panel um, from the heater, which we've done, and we can click OK. And our next step is to figure out what components could be possibly causing the indoor fan motor to not operate. And before I take any voltage readings here, I'm going to take out the wiring diagrams and come up with an inventory of possible causes here, starting with the line voltage diagram. And we can see the indoor fan motor is right here towards the bottom of the page. And it's possible we have an open winding in the motor. It's also possible we have a faulty run capacitor. It's also possible that these indoor fan relay contacts are not closing. And, and that means that the coil or the fan relay itself could be faulty. Now I'm going to take out the low voltage diagram. And if we look here, we can see that the thermostat also sends power to the fan relay coil. So we have four possibilities here. The indoor fan motor, the capacitor, the fan relay, or possibly the fan switch within the thermostat. And again, we're going to investigate each of these. Now, to begin with, we're going to measure for 24 volts at the fan relay coil. So take your voltmeter and just drop your meter leads at the two glowing orange hotspots at the fan relay coil connections. And again, you may need to zoom in. It makes it a lot easier to drop your leads if you do that. So we're putting the red lead on the top and the black lead on the bottom connection. And we do have 24 volts to the relay coil. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. Our next step is to verify that we have line voltage coming into the fan relay. Now, it's possible that we have a loose connection somewhere in a wire nut, so that's all this is going to verify. So again, we're going to place our meter leads at the two glowing orange hotspots at the line side of the fan relay. And when we do this, we have 240 volts. So we do have 240 volts coming to the fan relay, and we have 24 volts to the coil. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide now that we've measured 240. Our next step is to measure at the load side of the fan relay at the top. And this is just going to verify that the contacts are actually closing and sending power to the indoor fan motor and the capacitor. So we're going to take our meter leads and place them at those two glowing orange hotspots. And again, we have 240 volts. This eliminates the indoor fan relay as a possible cause here. It also eliminates the thermostat the fan switch within the thermostat because we had power to the relay coil. Click yes on the procedure guide. Our next step is to turn the power off. We're gonna to need to make some capacitance and resistance checks and we need to do this with the power off. So just click the service switch off and click okay. Next, we need to discharge the capacitor before handling it. When the power is shut off, the capacitor can still hold the charge, and this could result in electrical shock uh, to the technician. So this is an important safety consideration. Click on the capacitor and just click discharge. And there's a convenient capacitor discharge tool that's on the market. It's very inexpensive, uh, as opposed to using a screwdriver, which could potentially damage the capacitor or the screwdriver. So now that the capacitor has been discharged, we're going to click OK, and we're going to disconnect the wires or isolate it. So we're just going to click on the little orange outline here, which will disconnect the wires from the capacitor. This will also isolate the motor winding connections. Click OK on the procedure guide, and next we're going to measure the capacitance of the run capacitor for the indoor fan motor. 
Simply take your leads and place them on the glowing orange hotspots at the capacitor connections. Now, this capacitor is rated at 15 microfarads, and we should measure within 10% of that. And we do, in fact, measure 15 microfarads, so our run capacitor checks out. Now, our next step is to measure the resistance of the indoor fan motor windings. Now, you can measure the winding resistances individually. Uh, the red wire is our run winding, the black wire here is our common, and the yellow wire is our start winding. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure across both windings and determine if we have an open circuit there or not. So we're going to place one of the leads on the red wire, and we're going to place the other lead at the yellow wire. Now, this, again, is going to measure across both windings. And if you're a little confused on this, let me, let me show you on the wiring diagram. We're going to take out the line voltage wiring diagram, and we can see our meter leads are placed across run and start, which measures resistance across both of these windings. And when we do this, we see we have an open circuit here. OL indicates infinite resistance, and this means that one of these windings is open. Now, if you want to find out which one, you can check them individually, but this is not really going to be necessary uh, because we're going to need to replace the motor regardless. So we're going to click OL, or infinite resistance, on the procedure guide, and we're going to click on the motor to replace it. Now, before you replace any component, be sure to turn the power off, of course. Uh, make sure all connections are secured. You can then turn the power back on at that point. Once we've turned the power back on, we're going to click OK on the procedure guide and observe one full cycle of operation to make sure all loads are operating properly. You may want to pull the indoor filter to make sure it's clean and replace it if necessary. And last but not least, we're going to go up to the residence and ensure that heat is being received through the floor registers. And as we can see from the red graphic here, we do in fact have warm air entering the space. Now, if you're confused on any of the steps that we just took, simply click at the top left here and you can review each step in the diagnostic process. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.